All right, guys, today's video is meant to serve as a follow up to yesterday's reviews, as well as the raw performance video where I showed Tandy P ultra settings on the Ryzen 1700 up against the 7700K. There's been a lot of controversy and people questioning uh, reviewers testing methodologies, motherboard BIOSes, um, RAM speeds, all of this stuff. There seems to be a lot of inconsistency between several reviewers, some believe it's because we got different motherboards, different BIOS versions, settings used in the BIOS, as even including memory speeds. Uh, I was able to run my memory at 3000 megahertz without an issue in the Gigabyte Aorus Gaming 5 motherboard, so um, I really didn't have any issues with my motherboard and everything, so that may be contributing to why I was getting the performance that I was. But a lot of people had asked to see 720p low settings in order to eliminate any possibility of a GPU bottleneck. So that is exactly what we are doing here today. This is just going to be straight benchmark footage, just like we did yesterday in that raw performance video with the side by side between the 1700 and the 7700 K. Now I already did a full review, um, analyzing these processors with 1080p ultra. If you want to check that video out, I'll link it in the description as well as at the end on the title cards, like I did yesterday. But this is just the benchmarks side by side. So just to give you guys some information, uh, all the games were tested at 720p on the lowest possible settings that they would go. The 1700 was overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz at 1.3 volts. And our i7-7700K was overclocked to 5 gigahertz at 1.365 volts. The GPU used was the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Founders Edition graphics card. It does have an overclock of an additional 200 megahertz on the core and 300 megahertz on the memory. So you'll be able to see all of that information in the screen, on the screen in the side by side. We've also got frame timings up there, GPU temperature, CPU temperature for the 7700K, but not for the Ryzen 1700. The reason for that is that um, a lot of the software out there right now that would re report temperatures is not working 100% yet with Ryzen. So MSI Afterburner, which uses Riva Tuner for the overlay, that's not hooking in properly right now to get temperatures for the Ryzen 1700. The only way I've been able to monitor temperatures is with Gigabyte's SIV software, which allows you to monitor your system that comes with the Gaming 5 motherboard, and also the debug LED on the motherboard, which was displaying live temperatures. So that was how I was able to get temperatures when I was running. Just to recap what I'd said in the video, in, in the review, my 1700 never cracked 60 degrees Celsius, even under full load with an overclock. So really wasn't any temperature limitations or anything like that with the Ryzen 1700. So I believe that is all of the pertinent information that you guys would need to know. Um, I, both systems were using 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory at 3000 megahertz. One was a core, the, in the AMD build, I had Corsair Vengeance LPX, while in the uh, 7700K build, it was a G-Skill Trident Z kit. So that's really everything I think we need to go over here. All the games are running off of SSDs and all that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to let this benchmark footage run for you guys, just like yesterday. So you have as much data as possible to draw your own conclusions from this, from 720p low settings, which would, should really remove the GPU bottleneck significantly. I mean, during this testing, you'll see that I'm pretty sure in every single game, the GPU didn't get up to 99% usage. So it was either limited in some way by the processor, not having enough speed to deliver more frames or by the game engine itself. Actually, because of Battlefield 1's game engine being capped at 200 FPS, I didn't include that. I ended up replacing it with Grand Theft Auto 5 here for this video because it just, it capped it at 200 FPS. So there wasn't really much reason in testing it because no matter what I did, if it was at 720p low, I was just sitting on 200 FPS all the time with the GTX 1080. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to go ahead and leave a like down below and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll be seeing all of you in the comments for discussion as I'm sure this video will certainly create quite a bit of it as there was a lot of comments going on yesterday with the 1080p testing and all of that. Very exciting launch. There's just a lot of, uh, a lot of information going around and a lot of people are kind of confused and trying to make a purchase decision. So that's really what all this is about is just getting the most information possible for people so that they can discuss it. And then others can make, you know, a wise and well-informed purchase decision based on what they're looking for. I don't think this is really meant to show you know, I don't think anyone's going to really go out and buy a 1700 processor and play at 720p on low. 
but it's you know a way of showing a unbiased comparison between the two CPUs, which a lot of people had talked about yesterday in the comments. So I wanted to go back and revisit it for you guys since you had all asked for that. And if there's any other additional tests that I can do in the future with Ryzen processors, Intel processors, graphics cards, or whatever, I'll definitely be reading the comments down below. I I think I read about two to three thousand comments yesterday between all between the three to four videos that I posted, including the uh, the live discussion that I did with Steve from Gamers Nexus on TGW, we had a discussion about AMD Ryzen and GPU test, uh, not GPU, CPU testing methodology and all that stuff, which was, which was really interesting. If you want, you should go back and check that out between Steve from Gamers Nexus and myself. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. I'll let these benchmarks to continue run, and I will catch you guys next time. Ta-ra. Get Peter shot! 